What's up guys? It's your boy Renda Customs back here. And uh, today I decided I'm gonna do a little bit different video. Um, so I actually decided um, I'm gonna get out of demolition derbies for a while here and uh, go more into racing, um, stock cars and uh, mini stocks and things like that. And so I decided since uh, I'm getting out of the demolition derby game, I'm gonna go ahead and make a video and uh, try to help out some of you other guys. Um, show you how to build a uh, stock compact car, your four or six cylinder car. Um, I will say I've done pretty well at this. Um, I'm gonna show you some trophies. Uh, this isn't bragging, this is just to show you um, that I have been successful at it. These are all, I believe, first place. Um, one or two of these are second place. I think three are first place and two are second place. I've only done this, this is my second year doing it. I've done uh, those five derbies and um, have placed in all of them, three first place and two second place. So I'm gonna show you what I do to the car. Um, I did a lot of research before I jumped into this. And um, I also have done a few things of my own that worked out very well for me. So to start out with, um, I run in the stock four cylinder class, four and six cylinder class. I always use a four cylinder car simply because um, it's two less cylinders creating heat in the cooling system and giving you overheating problems. So this is uh, the last car that I use. As you can see, it's all wadded up. This car I actually won twice with, or sorry, I won once with, and I got second place another time. And then the last derby I did with it, I jumped up to a pro stock class, and uh, this is what's left of it. So this car was ran three times. This is a stock compact car. And uh, as you can see, it did very, very well. Um, so we'll start under the hood because this is kind of the main thing that people are looking for. Uh, so let me get my hood latched up, my hood screwed up. So I'll start with the cooling system. Um, a lot of the reasons why you time out in a derby is because your car overheats or your engine stops running. You have some kind of engine issue and you can't make a hit within the 60 seconds that they allow you or sometimes 30, uh, depending on what derby you are, uh, what the rules are there. So typically you have 60 seconds, you've got to make a hit. If you don't make a hit in 60 seconds, they time you out and you're done. So probably the number one reason for that is engine overheats from pushing on another car or uh, you get take a hit to the radiator. That's probably the most common thing. Take a hit to the radiator, get a hole in it, and engine stops running. Overheats and locks up and you're done. So what I do with the cooling system is different than I've ever seen anyone else do. I do not use a radiator at all. As you can see, um, I don't even have a radiator in it right now. It must have fallen out. Um, I run just a um, sealed cooling system. So this is all copper pipe. And uh, if you're familiar with metals, copper helps um, dissipate the heat in the atmosphere very well. So I run copper pipe as much as I can. I make a big loop around the engine bay. And uh, is anytime the coolant is flowing through this copper pipe, it's letting heat out in the atmosphere. It's getting heat out of the engine and into the atmosphere. Um, for the hood, I've drilled several holes in it and uh, that helps with letting some of the heat out of the engine compartment as well. Because as you can see, the hood, um, the fenders kind of seals all the heat in there pretty good and you don't want that heat in the engine bay. You want to get it out as quick as possible. So cut some holes in there. Most derbies, um, it's mandatory that you have at least one hole in the hood for a fire extinguisher for the safety crew. Um, I cut a few extra just to get some of that heat out. So that's under the hood for the cooling system. Um, another thing that I do is I run my heater core by itself. So you can see it on in here, that's your HVAC box. It would usually come all the way over to somewhere about here. I've taken off this last half that would hold on the AC um, evaporator and some different blend doors and vents and things like that. I've taken that whole half of the box out the only thing left in this side of the HVAC box is just the fan, the blower motor. So what I did is I take my heater core, which is like a mini radiator in itself, and I tape it, I seal it up very well, right in front of the blower motor. So anytime I turn on the blower motor, I turn all the way in high, it's blowing cold air directly through um, my heater core. There's no, there's no resistance, there's no blend doors, there's no vents, nothing it has to go through. It's just a direct straight shot right through the heater core. So during the derby, I run my blower motor all the way on high, heats all the way hot, and 
while you're in the middle of the derby, once it gets to temperature, if you put your hand down here, you can feel that air is just roasting hot, which is what you want. You want that uh, blower motor to be blowing out as much heat as possible out of this thing. So coolant, hot coolant from the engine comes through your um, heater core lines up in the engine compartment. Through the heater core, blower motor blows the hot air or the hot hot air across um, your uh, your uh, heater core and gets uh, a lot of the heat out of the engine. Another thing that I run uh, is something called water wetter in the cooling system. And most of the derbies that I run, they don't allow you to have any freeze in there. You have to run just straight water or something different. So what I run in it is a product called water wetter. It's in a little uh, about six inch tall bottle. Um, it's red in color and you can get it right at AutoZone. It's called water wetter. And uh, that helps reduce the coolant, the, the temperature of the coolant in the cooling system by, I believe, about 20 degrees. Um, so that pretty much covers the cooling system. Um, the radiator's not in here. I do leave the radiator, um, the AC condenser, all that stuff I leave right here in the front just um, as extra material to kind of pack in and uh, help protect the engine. If I took all of it out, it'd be a straight shot right to the engine block. And obviously, you don't want that. Um, so the next thing I think is probably going to be the fuel system. <clears throat> In most derbies that you run, uh, they're not going to allow you to run your uh, factory fuel tank in the car. Um, sometimes they'll let you run it if it's underneath the car and ahead of the rear axle, which in this case it is. But what you'll see most people do is they'll take these uh, marine boat tanks. These are old boat tanks, fuel tanks, for a, a boat with an outboard engine. And they will run these and they will um, take the fuel pump out of the car. They'll cut a hole in the top of the tank, just like I did here, and they'll um, JB weld, rivet, whatever you wanna do. Put, uh, put the stock factory fuel tank in this um, boat tank, or sorry, the stock factory fuel pump in this boat tank, and then uh, plumb it directly in the engine. Now, another thing that I do, I've done this both ways. The wiring for the fuel pump itself, sometimes, because the wiring for uh, the car, uh, fuel pump. The factory one is usually right there by the passenger rear door, or sorry, driver rear door. Um, a lot of times you can just run that harness directly to your tank because it's so close. But what I like to do, uh, your best bet is to run its own system right up to its own switch directly to the battery. The reason for that is you don't want any fuses or any relays or anything like that on your fuel system. Because if you take a hit, a wire gets pinched or something, uh, blows the fuse, you lose your fuel pump, and you're out of the derby just like that. So what I do, um, I run a direct wire directly from the battery through that switch, directly to the fuel pump. It's on its own circuit. Um, it's pretty difficult for anything to happen to that. I'll turn the key on so you can hear it. Turn the fan off. This is the fuel pump switch. You can hear it kick on and off. So as soon as I turn the key on, flip the switch on and just let it run. Um, with this particular car, you don't have to worry about um, fuel pressure regulator or anything like that because it is, uh, it's got a fuel pressure regulator up here on the fuel rail. It's got a feed line from the pump here and then a return line I have uh, plumbed in back to the cap. So as soon as I turn the key on, I flip that switch on and uh, just leave it till the end of the derby. I don't have to worry about it. So that is uh, the fuel system. Um, most of the time, they will have you put it where the back seat was. So I build uh, this little fuel tank shelf and it's connected right to the door bar. Um, so that pretty much sums up the fuel system. <clears throat> as far as the door bar, um, it's usually mandatory in most derbies that you have what's called a door bar. And this is a big piece of steel that runs from this door over to that door. The purpose of that is to protect the driver um, from the car squishing in on them sideways. And this car is a prime example of that. As you can see, this side of the car is absolutely smushed in. Um, only about a foot or so more, and uh, this passenger door would have been touching uh, my shoulder during the derby, and uh, you don't want that. That's how people get hurt bad. So that's the purpose of the door bar. Um, another piece that you put on, um, sometimes it's mandatory, sometimes it's not. I would always, always put one of these on, is a door bar on the outside um, of the driver's door. This is in case you get hit in that door, obviously. Um, typical rules in a derby, you're not allowed to hit in the driver's side door. 
However, it does happen, whether an accident or somebody gets mad, whatever the case. This is a door bar off another car I ran, and uh, I tried straightening it out already, but this one was actually in a V shape. It was collapsed so far in. Um, I got hit that hard in the driver's door a couple times that uh, this door bar was actually in the shape of a V. And so you certainly want something on there just for protection. This is a quarter inch thick angle iron. So that's what I run. Um, next thing is I'll talk about the struts. <clears throat> now, this is gonna depend on uh, where you run, what the rules are for the derby. Some uh, don't let you do anything with the struts. Some will allow you to do a little. Some will let you do a full build on the struts. Um, it just depends what their rules are. The most common place um, uh, that you see the struts break is right here at the bottom. And I don't know if we can see in here because uh, this one's already falling out. But right there at the top, well, this is actually the bottom of the strut tower, but the top of where it bolts to the spindle, that's where they break off every time. And that's because it's a pressure point or a pinch point. When you get hit in the tire, it wants to go that way. The top of the strut wants to go that way and it just kinks and snaps. So what I do, and again, this depends on where you run, what the rules are, is I put a sleeve around the outside of it. So if you can see, um, this strut has the inner part right here. Um, that's pretty much just thin sheet metal. It's a thin piece of tubing. And then it has this outer part, which is the casing. And that is this thin piece right here. That's kind of jagged. That's all that's holding it. And these things snap off um, usually about two hits. They snap in half and then you're done um, because you can't drive. Your tire's rubbing on the fender or your axle pops and you're pretty much done. So what I do is um, I put a, a steel sleeve around the outside of it. These are usually eighth, um, eighth inch thick um, steel sleeves that I put weld around the outside of it. That gives us some extra support and strength. Um, those things do a wonder. Like I said, I usually don't have those break, but like I said, this car, um, I jumped up a class and ran the pro stock class with it just because it was the last derby of the season and uh, there wasn't much light, life left in the car. I wanted to pretty much just scrap it anyways. Um, so typically you don't have a problem with those. Driver side is fine, but as you can see, this car got hammered uh, pretty hard on that side. So that's what these are gonna look like um, <clears throat> after they're all welded up, just like a normal strut pretty much. Um, as far as bumpers, these cars, I'm not gonna tell you what car I run, um, just because if I ever do a derby again, I'd rather not have all these cars bought up, uh, which is why most people don't like to tell um, everyone else what car they use and stuff like that. Um, it's just it's just a typical four cylinder car. I'm sure you can um, find one that is pretty easy. But with this particular year, <clears throat> uh, the newer year, they run steel bumpers on them. The older years, they had plastic bumpers on them. So um, in the case of the rules for the derbies that I run, if the car has factory plastic bumpers on it, they will allow you to do a bumper swap um, to a steel bumper from a car of the same model year. So these, this car had plastic bumpers on it and I just went to the, uh, the salvage yard and grabbed some random bumpers. I just found something that was steel from the same time period. It looked somewhat strong, threw it on there. There's no added metal. This is all factory stuff that was on there. Um, and I just had it uh, cut over the frame rail and welded on. There's no added metal inside here. There's no hard nosing, anything like that going on. It's just a stock steel bumper and uh, it's held up pretty well. The rear bumper, uh, same deal. This was, well, you can barely see it now. This was a factory plastic bumper that I swapped to a steel bumper and uh, it did well too. But um, like I said, this car is ran in three derbies and now um, it's the back end's pretty much collapsed in and um, there's not much bumper left. So that's a lot of uh, what I do to these cars. But um, eventually, no matter how uh, well you build the car, it's all gonna come down to how you drive it. <clears throat> you want to protect the front end as much as possible if you're uh, using a front wheel drive car. The back end, nothing matters. Um, once you move the fuel tank, the back end is what it is. All the vitals of the car, the engine, the wiring, the cooling system, all that is up here in the front. <clears throat> so when you drive 
in the derby, um, you want to protect the front end as much as possible. One other thing that I do, I didn't show this yet, is with the wiring harness. This is a big important thing as well. The wiring harness usually runs down the fender. In, this, in the case of this car, they actually run inside the fender, right up in here. Um, and that's a terrible idea to leave one of those in there in the factory spot because if you get hit in the fender just like this it's going to pinch the wiring harness cut wires and then you're done right off the bat just like that one hit and uh, you're done so what i do is i rip the wiring harness out all around the front of the car and i take everything and i put it right in the center um, of the engine compartment or in the case of these cars a lot of the times it's ran up here where the dash was i've got it the dash out and I just lay the wiring harness right up there. Um, basically, you wanna do anything you can to the car to keep um, everything from any of the engine vitals, anything like that, from getting hit, pinched, cut, twisted, anything like that. The battery, I bolt right down here to the passenger floor so nothing can happen to that. Uh, you definitely don't want that up in the engine compartment because if it gets hit, it can very easily turn into a hydrogen bomb and uh, you don't want that either. That'd be a bad day for you. So, uh, like I said, this car has done very well. Um, got absolutely hammered. And uh, as you can see on the passenger side, it was hit pretty hard. But uh, I'll show you, because of how I build it, it still runs just fine. All these hard hits that I took, everything, still flares right up. Runs just fine. And the car is never overheated. Derby's usually about 25 minutes a piece, and uh, it's never overheated on me with this cold system. Never had a problem, and uh, like I said, still runs just fine. tips um if you're looking to build a stock compact demolition derby car that's uh pretty much all there is to it um one other thing i forgot for the tires um i do put tire slime in them i fill them right up with tire slime that helps um in the event you get a small flat like a nail or something sharp in the tire um the, the tire slime will help seal that and keep air in the tire but obviously if you get a big gash in the tire like this one here um, there's nothing you can do about that. It's going to go flat on you. Um, and of course, I run donuts in the back because they're thinner and uh, there's less sidewall to get hit and pop off the rim and uh, just small things like that. Um, another thing too for uh, the spindles or for the shocks in the back, this one's kind of hard to tell because it's been hammered so hard, but I put a two by four between uh, the shock and the frame rail back here. That keeps it keeps the shock from pushing in and eventually cracking right here at the bottom um, and breaking like I showed you on that other one. The 2x4 just keeps it from moving in and uh, you don't usually have a problem on the back um, even though they take the most abuse. It's usually the front ones. Um, but again, it just comes down to how you drive it. You got to be careful um, and, and try not to take too many hits on the front. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, there's just some tips to help you guys um, if you're looking to jump into demolition derbies a little bit, looking for a car. Um, I always run four cylinders. Most of the time you can run four and six cylinder in the same class. But again, I just prefer four cylinders because of um, just it's less heat in the cooling system. If you're going to run a setup like I did here, um, you might be thinking you want a six cylinder because it has more power. Um, I've never had a problem with a four cylinder. You're going slow, you're not in a race. Um, four cylinder has had plenty of power for me, never had an issue. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Um, there's just a few things uh, to help you out if you build a car. And if you like this video, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.